So it's quite clear that when Elon Musk said that Grok 3 is the world's smartest AI, he wasn't actually jumping on the hype train. Today, he unveiled Grok 3, which is by far the world's smartest AI across a range of several different benchmarks. In today's video, I'll get through all of the announcements that you need to understand for Grok 3 and show you guys why this is actually the world's smartest AI in its current form. So one of the first things most people, of course, going to want to look at is, of course, the benchmarks. And if we take a look at Grok 3, the non-reasoning model, we can actually see that those benchmarks are pretty incredible. Across the board, we can clearly see that Grok 3 and Grok 3 Mini actually surpass recent state-of-the-art models like Gemini 2, DeepSeek V3, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and the recently updated GPT-40. This is something that is truly, truly incredible. And even if you guys think the benchmarks are important, later on, the team actually goes to show why they looked at new benchmarks, tested Grok3 on those, and it still manages to excel. So it seems like all of the training, like this, you know, a huge training run that they managed to do has actually managed to make the model that much smarter. And these scaling laws are still performing very well. You know, the model is still currently training, actually. So this is a little preview of our benchmark numbers. So we evaluated Grok3 on you know, three different categories, on uh, general mathematical reasoning, on um, general knowledge about STEM and science, and then also on computer science, coding. So Amy, uh, American Invitational Math Examination, uh, hosts it you know, once a year. Uh, and if we evaluate the model performance, we can see that the Grok3 across the board is in a league of its own. Even its little brother, Grok3 Mini, is reaching the frontier across all the other competitors. So you would say, well, at this point, all these benchmarks, you're just evaluating you know, the memorization of the textbooks, memorization of the GitHub repos. How about the real-time usefulness? How about we actually use those models in our product? Another thing that I do love about the Grok3 team is that they also managed to put their model into the chatbot arena. If you aren't familiar with the chatbot arena, it's not quite like a standardized test. It's essentially a test where you have two AI models that give you a response anytime you ask an AI question. And out of the two responses that you get, you essentially pick which one you think is better. And it's a blind test. So you don't know which model is called which. You just receive a response. You click which one you think is better. And over time, they showcase which model has been receiving the most number of wins. And currently, the number one model on the chatbot arena is actually Grok3. So even in blind tests where people aren't you know, biased by the names of the model, Grok3 is something that is clearly winning. And remember, this is just the non-reasoning model. We actually kicked off a blind test of our Grok3 model, codenamed Chocolate. It's pretty hot. Yeah, hot chocolate. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, been running on this uh, platform called Chabot Arena for two weeks. Um, I think the entire X platform at some point speculated this might be the next generation of AI coming your way. So uh, how this Chabot Arena works is that um, it strip away the entire product surface, right? It's just raw comparison of the engine of those AGIs, the language models themselves, and place the interface where the user will submit one single query, and you get to show two responses. You don't know which model they come from, and in the end, you make the vote. So in this blind test, Grok3, an early version of Grok3, already reached like 1,400. No other models had reached an ELO score, head-to-head -head comparison to all the other models at this score. And it's not just one single category. It's 1,400 aggregated across all the categories in chatbot capabilities, instruction following, coding. So it's number one across the board in this blind test. And it's, it's still climbing. So we actually have to keep updating it. So it, it's, it's 14, 1,400, about 1,400 and climbing. Yeah. And in fact, we have a version of the model that we think is already much better than the one that we tested here. Yeah. We'll see you know, how, how far it gets. Uh, but that's the one that we're, you know, um, working on or talking right. about today. Yeah, so actually one thing, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're using Grok3, you, I think you may notice improvements almost every day um, because we're, we're continuously improving the model. So literally, even in, within 24 hours, you'll see improvements. 
now, of course, is the juicy part, the reasoning models. So these models are basically models that think for a extended period of time rather than just giving you an instantaneous response. If you aren't familiar with why these models do this, it's because it allows the models to think for a longer amount of time, giving them access to better and higher quality responses, enabling them to be more accurate and tackle more complex problems. This is something that we've moved to do as an industry because this is something that, you know, is providing promising results and will likely lead us to a truly smart AI. Now, when we look at Croc 3's reasoning capabilities in terms of the thinking models, those two also managed to surpass even the recently debuted O3 Mini that many people heralded as the smartest AI on the planet. But now that is unfortunately number two. Yeah, okay, so let's see how Grog does on those interesting, challenging benchmarks. Uh, so yeah, so reasoning, again, refers to those models that actually thinks quite for quite a long time before it tries to solve a problem. So in this case, uh, you know, around a month ago, the Grog 3 pre-training finishes. So after that, we worked very hard to put the reasoning capability into the uh, current Grog 3 model. Uh, but again, this is very early days, so the model is still currently in training. So right now, what we're gonna show to people is this beta version of the Grog 3 reasoning model. Alongside, we also are training a mini version of the reasoning model. So essentially, on this plot, you can see uh, the Grog 3 reasoning beta and then Grog 3 mini reasoning. The Grog 3 reasoning, mini reasoning is actually a model that we train for much longer time. And you can see that sometimes it actually performs slightly better compared to the Grog 3 reasoning. This also just means that there's a huge potential for the Grog 3 reasoning because it's trained for much less time. Um, so, all right, so let's actually look at what, how, how it does on those three benchmarks. <clears throat> so Jimmy also introduced already, so essentially we're looking at three different areas, mathematics, science, and coding. Um, and for math, we're picking this high school competition math problem. Um, for science, we actually pick those PhD level science questions. Um, and for coding, it's also actually pretty challenging. It's competitive coding and also some uh, lead code, which is some code inter interview problems that people usually get when they interview for companies. So on those benchmarks, you can see that the Grog 3 actually performed quite well uh, across the board compared to other competitors. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty promising. These models are very smart. Yeah. Yeah. So Tony, what, what, what are those uh, shaded bars? Yeah, so okay, so uh, I'm glad you asked this question. So for those models, because it can reason, it can think, you can also ask them to even think longer. Uh, you can spend more what we call test and compute, which means you can spend more time to reason, to think about a problem before you spit out the answer. So in this case, the shaded bar here means that we just uh, ask the model to spend more, more time. You know, you can solve the, the same problem many, many times before it, it tries to conclude what is the right solution. And once you give this compute or this, this kind of budget to the model, it turns out the model can even perform better. So this is uh, essentially the sh shaded bar in, the, in those plots. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I think this is really exciting, right? Because now, instead of just doing one chain of thoughts with AI, why not do multiple exactly. all at once? Yes. So that's a very yes. powerful technique that allows to continue to scale the model capabilities after training. Uh, so they also wanted to see if this was just a situation where because they trained it for so long and on so much data, was this something that was just, you know, overfitting and it's basically just memorizing parts of the test. They decided to test it on the newer Amy 2025 and the results were pretty surprising. Um, and, you know, people often ask, are we actually just overfitting to the benchmarks? Yes. So how about yes. generalization? So yes, I think, uh, yeah, this is definitely a question that we are asking ourselves, whether we are overfitting to those current benchmarks. Uh, luckily, uh, we have a real test. So about five days ago, Amy 2025 just finished. This is where high school com students compete in this particular benchmark. So we got this very fresh new competition, and then we asked our two models to compete on the same benchmark, on the same exam. And it turns out, uh, very interestingly, the Grog 3 reasoning, the big one, um, actually does uh, better um, on this particular new fresh exam. This also means that the generalization capability of the big model is stronger, much stronger, compared to the smaller model. Uh, if you compare it to the last year's exam, actually this is the opposite. The smaller model kind of learns the, uh, the, the previous exams better. 
So yeah, so this, this actually shows some kind of true generalization from the model. That's yeah. right. So 17 months ago, our Grok Zero and Grok One barely solved any high school problems. That's right. And now we have a kid that just already graduated. The Grok, Grok is ready to go to college. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it won't be long before it's simply perfect. The human exams won't be part, they'll be too easy. Yeah. Like, and internally, we actually, as the Grok continue to evolve, uh, we're going to talk about you know, what we're excited about, but very soon there will be no more benchmark left. Yeah. Now let's actually take a look at these reasoning capabilities in action to show you guys what these models can actually do. Yeah, so like, like Jimmy said, we've added advanced reasoning capabilities to Grok, and we've been testing them pretty heavily over the last few weeks. I wanted to give you a little bit of a taste of what it looks like when Grok is solving hard reasoning problems. So we've prepared two little problems for you. One comes from physics, and one is actually a game that Grok is going to write for us. Um, so uh, when it comes to the physics problem, you know, what we want Grok to do is to plot a viable trajectory to do a transfer uh, from Earth to Mars, and then uh, at a later point in time, a transfer back from Mars to Earth. Um, and that requires some, you know, some physics that Grok will have to understand. Um, so we're going to challenge Grok, you know, come up with a viable trajectory, uh, calculate it, uh, and then plot it for us so we can see it. And um, yeah, this is totally unscripted, yeah, by this, the way. This is the, that's the entirety of the prompt, which, which should be clarified, is that yeah. there's, there's nothing more than that. Yeah, exactly. This is the Grok interface, and we've typed in this text that you can see here, generate code for an animated 3D plot of a launch from Earth, uh, landing on Mars, and then back to Earth at the next launch window. Um, and we've now kicked off the query, and you can see Grok is thinking. So uh, part of Grok's advanced reasoning capabilities are these thinking traces that you can see here. You can even go inside and uh, actually read what Grok is thinking as it's going through the problem, as it's trying to solve it. Um, yeah, we, we, should say, like, we are doing some obscuration of the thinking so that our model doesn't get totally copied instantly. Um, so there's more to the thinking than is displayed. Uh, yeah. All right, so this was the, the little physics problem we had. Um, you know, we, we, we've collapsed the thoughts here, so they're, you know, they're hidden. Uh, and then we see uh, Grok's answer below that. So it explains, you know, it wrote a Python script here using matplotlib, uh, then gives us all of the code. Um, so let's take a quick look at the code. You know, it seems like it's doing reasonable things here, not, not totally off the mark. Um, solve Kepler sa says here, so maybe it's solving Kepler's, laws, Kepler, Kepler's law numerically. Um, yeah, there's really only one way to find out if this thing is working. I'd say let's, let's give it a try. Let's run, let's run the code. Mm -hmm. All right, and we can see, um, yeah, Grok is animating you know, two different planets, Earth and Mars, here. And then the, the green uh, ball is the, the vehicle that's transiting, the, the spacecraft that's uh, transitioning between Earth and Mars. And you could, you could see the journey from Earth to Mars. And it looks like, yeah, indeed, the, the astronauts return safely you know, at the right moment in time. Um, so no, obviously this was just generated on the spot, so you know, we can't tell you if that was actually a correct solution, so we're gonna take a closer look, you know, maybe we're gonna call some colleagues from SpaceX, ask them if, if this is legit. Um, yeah, it's pretty close, it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 there's a lot of complexities in the actual <laughs> orbits that have to be taken into account, but this is, this is pretty close to, to what, it, what it looks like. Awesome. Um, now, Grok 3 also entered its agentic era, which is something that I'm not surprised by. AI agents are essentially the theme for 2025 and beyond. And essentially, they released something once again. I'm honestly surprised that all of these companies have named the product the exact same thing. They've called it, once again, Deep Research. Or in this case, they've called it Deep Search. Um, so today, we're actually introducing a new product called Deep Search that is the first generation of our Grok agents, that not just helping the engineers and researchers and scientists to do coding, but actually help everyone to answer questions that you have day to day. It's a kind of like a next generation search engine that really help you to understand the universe. So you can start asking questions like, for example, hey, when is the next Starship launch day, for example? Um, so let's try that, let's get the answer. Um, on the left-hand side, we see uh, a high-level progress bar. Essentially, you know, the model not only is going to do one single search, like the current rack system, but actually thought very deeply about 
hey, what's the user intent here? And what are the facts I should consider at the same time? And how many different websites I should actually go and read their content, right? So this is, can really save hundreds of hours of everyone's Google time <laughs> if you want to really look into certain topics. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the bullet summaries of how the current model uh, you know, is doing, what websites browsing, what sources verifying, and oftentimes actually cross-validate different sources out there uh, to make sure the answer is actually correct before it's output final answer. And we can, you know, at the same time, fire up a few more queries. Mm -hmm. um, how about, you know, you know, you're a gamer, right? So, uh, uh, sure. <laughs> Yeah, so how about what are some of the best builds and most popular builds in uh, uh, Pathma Excel? Hardcore, right? A hardcore league. That I mean, you can, if you can technically just look at the hardcore ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a fast way to figure it out. Yeah, we'll see what the model does. <laughs> um, and then we can also do, uh, you know, uh, something more fun. For example, um, how about like make a prediction about the March Madness out there? Yeah, so this is kind of a fun one where um, Warren Buffett has a billion dollar bet. If you can exactly match the, I think the, 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 the sort of the entire winning tree of March Madness, you can win a billion dollars from Warren Buffett. So like, it would be pretty cool if AI could help you win a billion dollars from Buffett. <laughs> that seems like a pretty good investment. Let's go. <laughs> now, another neat feature of this deep search is that you can actually look at the chain of thought of the model. So if the model doesn't respond with something that you wanted, you can actually look at how the model reasoned through its search data to see how it came to that conclusion. I think this one's really useful because they talk about, you know, having the model be as transparent as possible. And this is actually going to make it even more useful. So if you don't get the response that you do want, you can actually reason, look into the model's thoughts and figure out why. And then... In this case, you can actually scroll through, actually reading to the mind of Grok. Like what information does the model actually think about are trustworthy, what are not? How does it actually cross-validate different information sources? So that makes the entire search experience and information retrieval process a lot more transparent to our users. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and this is much more powerful than any search engine out there. You can literally just tell it, only use sources from X, you know, and it will try to respect that. Yeah. And so it's much more steerable, much more intelligent than... I mean, it, it really should save you a lot of time. So something that might take you half an hour or an hour of researching on the web or searching social media, it, you can just ask it to go do that and, and come back and 10 minutes later, it's done an hour's wor worth of work for you. That's really what it comes down to. So now if you are wondering how this AI is going to be rolled out, they actually speak about a new website called grok.com. Currently, as of recording this video, the website is unfortunately down. I'm pretty sure the hype just simply broke the website. Maybe they didn't expect that many viewers, but it's basically going to be on grok.com where they also have the super grok, which is basically going to be where you can access the app dedicated on their website. They're one of the most advanced capabilities and the earliest access to, to new features. Um, so feel free to check that out as well. This, this is for the dedicated Grok app and for the website. Exactly. Website. So, so our, our new website is called grok.com. Yeah. And you'll also you'd find... never guess. Yeah, you <laughs> never guess. And you can also find our Grok app in the iOS App Store. And that gives you a, like, a more pol even, even more polished uh, experience that's totally Grok-focused. If, you know, if you want to have Grok you know, easily available one tap away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the version on grok.com on... Uh, you know, on, on a web browser is going to be the, the most, the latest and most advanced version because obviously it takes us a while to get the, get something into an app and then get it approved by the app store. So, uh, and then it's, if, if that something's in a phone format, there's limitations of what you can do. So the most powerful version of Grok um, and the latest version will be the, the web version at grok.com. Yeah, so, so watch out for the name Grok Free in the app. Dead giveaway. So, yeah, exactly. That, that's, the, that's the giveaway that you have Grok Free. And if it says Grok2, then it, it, Grok3 hasn't quite arrived for yet, but we're working hard to roll this out today.